whole lot of spamming and wavering. Yeah, I still remember the uh, uh, junior high track meet that Sacred Heart hosted at Kansas Wesleyan, and they had one high jump there. And so you've got seven boys, seven girls, eight boys, eight girls, one pit. This no, this was Sacred Heart doing it at Kansas Wesleyan back when Grant was in junior high, and. Uh, the sun was going down before they even started eighth grade high jump, yeah. and it messed up. We went into you know, yards and hurdles and running this and doing that. It, um, we had to break for the mile, and it just it was just an absolute nightmare. And he um, he, he had a terrible day. Didn't he? You mess with somebody's schedule, their pattern, their, what they're used to. Yeah, that way you get better when you get older. Yeah, I, I am pretty schedule oriented. <coughs> It's not so bad for Colt, which he doesn't do much. But McKenna, her phone, somebody just texts her on her phone and she's mm -hmm. wanting to change plans. Huh? And five minutes later, she gets another phone. What's the thing? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. I believe we should be good to get started, and um, I'm not hearing any echoes, so we should be ready to go. All right, good work, everyone. Showing off for our IT gentlemen here tonight. Huh? Uh, so we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6.34, Kelsey, and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. May look through the agenda. Any additions or questions, changes to the agenda? I'll move we approve the agenda as presented. Second. All right. Thank you, Steve and Sharice. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 4 0. Hi, Jill. Anybody else is like me today. It feels like we're a little bit free falling. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Okay. Home petty. <laughs> okay. Uh, consent agenda. A few items on there, standard items. Another thing that we had on there was the KSB membership renewal. Season pass and legal assistance fund. If there's is there anything anyone milk bids as well? Anything, anything anyone wants to pull off the consent agenda? Motion to it. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried five zero. No public audience. Seating. Okay. Item 4.1, IT Director, Mr. Richter, is here. There he is. Give us right. a, another right. annual update. Yeah. Well, I guess for some starters, um, you know, it's been a pretty good year. Um, you know, we had a cybersecurity training earlier in the year for staff that I think went pretty well. Probably want to follow up with that early in next year. So a few small challenges I've had is, you know, we've, we've got some classrooms that have had some poor Wi-Fi signal throughout the course of the year. It's been kind of like playing whack-a-mole. Um, but we, we're getting those dead spots filled in and improved. Um, you know, uh, well, overall, I feel like it's been a pretty good year. Um, you guys have anything, questions for me? <laughs> We have on our agenda the uh, potential purchases for this next round and the quote on some theater, some work on the theater. Yes. Uh, probably long overdue in there. Uh, I don't know how often you guys get to visit the, the booth in that uh, space, but uh, it's, it needs some TLC. Um, the uh, quote that you see for that. Uh, basically, everything you see on here, uh, nothing will be added to it. Uh, Roger and I are still kind of tossing around some ideas of maybe saying things that I can uh, remove from this list, uh, like the, the monitors uh, might not be necessary, but I would say that it's going to be either this number or, or slightly bigger, um, as far as the theater goes. Uh, some of those things would include improving our uh, wireless presentation capabilities. Um, it's just not, it's, especially when we stream video in there, it gets choppy, it sync with audio. It can get a little embarrassing, especially if we have guest presenters. So, uh, again, it's long overdue. Um, I have upgraded the desktop computer in that booth, so that is a new unit at least that we can operate from in there. So. 
I've seen some improvement. You know, you can get going a little bit faster than you have in the past. Um, I'll be uh, installing a Wi-Fi access point in the theater. Right now, we've got one that's in the hallway between the uh, the band and band room in the theater. It's trying to serve both areas, and it's just not cutting it for both rooms because of the space, the size of the spaces. So we'll be looking to take care of that. Um, and uh, I think that with you know these uh, items here on this, as well as the wireless upgrade in the theater, I think probably moving in the right direction. Can I ask a question? You were talking about the wireless, which it's kind of down my alley, and I'm not a question. <clears throat> So you're talking about wirelessly going to the projector, is that what you're... Yeah, to present as far as connecting your video with your device, laptop, whatever, to the projector. Um, what we currently use, and on, we have, it's called a screen view, and we have it in mm -hmm. basically every room with a display. I haven't been a fan of it over the last couple of years. Um, I have classrooms that will lose connectivity, will struggle getting connected, just basically what we see. Um, I'm still, you know, this this uh, unit here that I'm proposing for the theater, um, I don't know that it would be realistic to, to put a $300 wireless unit in every classroom. That would be something to talk down the road. Um, but uh, again, I with with those people right now, if they're just, pre you know, presenting a document, the wireless works fine. But when it comes to video... You're, you're yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think you can... I I have pretty extensive experience in this area, so I and I'm not. No, I'm, you, um, you're going to be better off bringing using a ballon and a and a blue wire and go back down, say to the to back to the control room and ask them to take their computer and set it there, and you'll get crisp, perfect, and you'll be able to run your audio off of that. You'll never get that wireless. I I I've tried this and I it. You know, and it just, it, you're not going to get it to match up. I mean, I would agree with you 100%. That's been my experience, even in classrooms. It, yeah, you're not. Then, then you could take and, and give them a. Uh, I, you know, and you could control your device remotely. Well, well using Cat5 and, 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 and a good quality Phelan, Giffen's the ones that I use, I'm going almost 1,000 feet in the, uh, uh, I think it's had right, 700, six to 700 feet in the Bicentennial Center. And getting along where you you can listen and they then they everything works correctly and that's that would be if you bring I know this probably isn't place for the discussion I don't know that but that's that'll get you where you want to go and then you can take in to make it wirelessly for the person then just hand them just hand them a, a you know a clicker or you know I have a remote mouse and keyboard and then they can go down there and sit in their seat and, and have their mouse and keyboard and, you, you'll you'll like that so much better. Uh, I, you know, I mean, I spent a lot more money on wireless payloads. Uh, I've got some Hollyland that we use, and we just know you can't get that mouth on there because it just don't work. I've had very little success. You'll have wireless yeah. video. Uh, and that's whether it's this district or the last when they had the fancy clear touch displays with all of that built in. It didn't yeah. work. Didn't matter at all. And um, with this, uh, I have tested this particular unit. Um, Logan Henry, um, our own Mrs. Henry's uh, husband, sure. has been out here, uh, kind of consulted me on some of this. He actually purchased one of these. We did do a test run with it in the theater, and it worked really well then. You know, so we may, before we make a final decision, I may have him come out here again. Again, I that's one of the biggest, I've, uh, that I've tossed around with Roger more than anything else about it is I don't have a lot of faith in any wireless solution as far as casting your device when it comes to that. ISO. Yeah, Roger's <laughs> seen stuff that I'm dealing with up there. I mean, I don't even try it. Right, and we have something similar, the Cat5 to HDMI in the Commons that can and, and there, those. And there are some, I mean, I've got some shorter ones. I'll, I'll give you a bucket full of them that'll go 250 to, to 400 feet. Uh, and they're, you know, as far as that goes, but because I'm not using it anymore because the feet we just go further now. But if you buy a set of GIF and GIF and Bayless, and they're they're going to be more expensive than 300 bucks, five to six hundred, 
you're going to be so happy when you get them and they got an HDMI and you plug it right in the computer. It just. I agree. Yeah. Just, uh, I can't argue any of that. And uh, I, I, and appreciate, I, and I appreciate the uh, advice. I really do. Feel free to, the lights, you know, available. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I feel free to. Oh yeah. Give a try. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. So again, this this quote is more tentative, um, but we just wanted to make you guys aware of what we're talking about. And as far as uh, some of the other things go, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, last May, I uh, applied for an ECF grant. It's basically the emergency connectivity fund that came about during COVID to help schools that may have been shorthanded on devices when students were sent home remotely. Um, we were told last summer that we were likely to not be approved for this, and then all of a sudden here in the last couple of months, we got word that we were. So um, with that, um, the uh, 200 iPads that are proposed here, those will be for four grades, K through two. Um, one nice thing about this particular agreement here is that we are getting three years of Apple Care with it. And some of our little ones have a ten tendency to break screens, uh, break off headphone jacks a little bit more frequently than others. And with Apple Care, if they can't repair it, they will replace it. So um, that'll be a significant help just as far as even managing repairs go. So the total total quote for that is $75,590. And that is something that will be fully reimbursed for. That is fantastic. And then the next quote from CTL is for 200 Chromebooks, and those will cover grades 7 through 9. Um, another nice thing about this agreement is we do get a one-year two-way shipping on repairs or replacements for those um, for a total of $68,000, which will again be fully reimbursed through the ECF uh, grant. Uh, lastly, on the ECF, we are getting uh, five total laptops for staff. Um, and again, that's a total of $4,757.69, and that will be fully reimbursed as well via UCF. So those will be like the same laptops they already have? Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, this isn't fully reimbursed. We actually get, the way it works is with ECF, you get $400 per device. Sure. Our staff devices are a little bit more than $400, so it's a little less than half. It's, is, is that enough devices? I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll that's do my We're getting five with ECF and then we're purchasing five off of ECF. Oh, we're, we're buying 10 total. So you'll see okay. two quotes that look identi identical, but one is for ECF. Okay. Um, and then from there, I am looking to purchase 30 new desktops, similar to what we purchased last summer for our secondary lab and other secondary areas. Uh, this will be for our elementary lab and for our FFA lab down in the uh, action. And this is not an ECF uh, ever purchase. They only cover mobile wireless devices for that. <clears throat> but, you know, in all, <clears throat> between those devices, um, We are looking at, uh, it looks like a total out of district cost of $25,318.58, which to me is an incredible value considering what we're getting. Very nice. Yeah, we need to remember that though, the so-called free money is in our way. <laughs> No, there's no such thing as free. No, nope, you're paying for somehow. Yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. That is my point. No. That we, well, when we get to that point, well, time on, yeah, yeah, you, it, so it I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not poo pooing any of it. I'm, I'm no, happy no, with everything. No. But I'm. This has been very nice because uh, it's allowed us to. Um, this grant has allowed us to do some updates on their dime, and uh, and we've got a a cycle for replacing devices, and this will allow us to push that for another year as we use these devices to satisfy that cycle. Yeah. Um, we have a, a budget to cycle these out uh, on a regular basis, 
and uh, this is very nice to be able to save that money back for the equipment that we're doing by using the grant. Right, and going forward, uh, Roger and I talk pretty regularly about this, that you know, we are, are trying to make it a, a habit of spending $100,000 a year on uh, device upgrades. We, we do want to stagger that uh, in this case, it was just obviously an opportunity to <coughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. You may have some older devices that you can It helps reset the table a little bit when it comes to the rotation. Our A through two iPads were last purchased in 2017, for example. So uh, I think this is perfect time for that. So you're you're totally positive on on the theater that that's enough. That seems like a, for that for the to replace everything in there and kind of again being involved in this kind of thing, it does not seem like a very large dollar figure. No, it actually, it, well, uh, some of the things that Logan proposed, it was it was closer to 10. But what we're kind of trying to do here is pick what we need, what we feel like we need right now. What you're saying here is just what I'm proposing that we worry about this summer. Well, and, I, and again, I, that, I, I feel it necessary to cross check. If you need 10,000 for that theater, I'm fully I myself, I speak for no one else. No. We're considering a facade that costs two hundred twenty thousand. No, ten thousand here seems like cheap. Yes, and that is in a theater. The same. He has encouraged so, me to, uh, you know, he's fully supportive of that. Again, I think that it gets used a lot. I, I yeah. and I don't want to. I don't want to sound too negative about the space, but it also gets abused a lot. Sure. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. And so I'm hesitant to go all in on a space. That we're unsure how well it will be taken care of, and I want to gauge, you know, and it's something that we need to make sure everybody's aware of. If we're going to do this. We really, really need you to respect it and take care of it. And you know, and and I'm not pointing any finger towards any one individual. I'm not perfect. I know no one is, and it's just one of those things that that's where my hesitation. No, I, 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 I agree fully. I, it, it's, I just see these classes of this project is to uh, clean out that room, reorganize that room, and simplify some of the issues, uh, some of the, the controls that are in there. Uh, one of the issues that we have traditionally faced as we've gone through this is people will go in needing to use something, not know exactly how it's used, and as they start flipping switches and, and stuff, they will throw us out of whack. Unplugged and, thing. And, 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 and then it takes time to put it back. Um, and it's just, it's too complicated. There needs to be, and that's part of what this goal is, uh, is to clean it out, make it crisp and, and nice again to where people will see it, be proud of it, respect it, but also to simplify some things. Some of these devices that are on here are to make it a little easier uh, so that when people go in there, they know how to turn it on, uh, they can use it for whatever they're doing, and leave it the way they found it. And that's a, that's a big goal on this. And then we'll look at other things possibly uh, down the road, but this will be a good step forward. Big challenge. It is. It's, it's you know, I'm, I'm hesitant, but I want to do it. I mean, I think that... Okay. Again, it's used a lot. We've got to try. So, so on the rotation of the devices, does this throw off the rotation any? Not really, because right now, uh, it, it, well, if it wasn't for this, we would be purchasing a lot of this out of pocket. We would be purchasing this anyways. We would. Okay. okay. This is something, like I said, the gate through two iPads were bought in 2017 or 2018. Mm -hmm. The uh, seventh and eighth grade Chromebooks and the exiting seniors were bought in 2019. So we're looking at four okay. years of those. So basically, again, it kind of helps us reset the table and get things more in balance. And then at this point, like next year, we'll be planning on doing a ninth grade each year. And then It'll be rotating as they they'll carry those through their four years. Right. Okay. It seems our annual capital outlay budget on it uh, used to be around fifty thousand, and then it was sixty some, and now I think it's seventy five. Last time. 
that's kind of that's not pretty far off. Well, yeah. Then you, I mean, you take into account everything's more expensive right. than it's ever been. So. I think that conversation when we and we're going to go back and look at the uh, technology rotation again as we've gotten these pieces and make sure that we're uh, got the next five years lined out. But a big part of that conversation is um, how long can you use one of these devices? How long can you trust that device to work? Uh, and there's I mean there's some debate on how far you can go, but in general, rule of thumb is five years. Uh, some of them struggle to make five. Some of them might be able to squeeze a six or a seven here. And the Chromebooks are one that's a big challenge, I think, just because of they're traveling for our seventh through twelfth graders anyway. They're going between home and events and who knows grandma's house or wherever. So, you know, they just get that natural wear and tear on them. Um, let's see what was the other question. Oh, so the teacher one. Do we have some teachers? Not without. Uh, basically, this year we've had some that have failed. The, the, the device itself has failed. We've had some accidents. Did they all get new ones a couple of years ago? 2019. Okay. Those, that's what Roger and, and, and these, um, everyone here is using. And they're still rock solid devices. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to. This is. Yep. So we'll be taking care of you, Cassie. But, um, but yeah, we've got just goofy things. Her speakers don't work, and HDMI ports get worn out from being plugged in and unplugged a lot. Just So we're just kind of filling in gaps with those. I don't, again, I think that these devices are going to be okay for a little bit. And with those, I think the idea of filling in gaps rather than buying 60 of them at a time at 800 or 900 bucks a pop. I think that we just try to fill in where we need um, with those. And the elementary lab and the other ones, the SFA lab, those instructors are wanting to stay with desktops. They are. They are. Um, I have, uh, well, I, I'm sure FFA does. I don't know what else they go to at the moment. Um, with Shauna and, and the elementary lab, we've tossed around some ideas with that, and she's it pretty firm that that's what she wants to keep rolling with. So, okay. Thank you. Mr. Richter, thank you for your work on that grant. That is a big deal to the budget here at 306, a big deal to our taxpayers, uh, and it's also a great way to, to bring needed updates to our, to our students and staff. So that's a huge win. Thank you. Thank you. We need to make a motion <coughs> to go ahead with this, these purchases, or? Yes, uh, you've got two different ones. You've got the computer quote, uh, and then you've got the theater <coughs> quote. Uh, and I put in my dialogue there, cost is under 6000 So if you want to set that at six to give a little uh, flexibility there, you sure can. Um, we're under that, uh, so, and don't intend to go uh, too much more, but uh, maybe even less, depending on what we have. So you've got two different ones there if you'd like to make motions. I move that we approve the purchase of sound equipment for the theater, uh, not to exceed $6,000 at this time. And I move that we approve the computer purchases as outlined for a total outer district cost of what do you say twenty five thousand three hundred and uh, eighteen and fifty eight cents. Yep, there you go. Yep, there we go. That's the number I had on the top of my head. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Okay, move and second. Any other discussion? All right, and keep, I'll kind of echo what Dwight said, keep us informed on the theater project if there's additional needs there. That I understand you're balancing, thinking through that, but. Yes, there's, again, uh, I have a work to, uh, you know, we, the patrons, the students, there's a lot of fine arts 
programs that happens in there for our district and that's just what we want to support the needs that are there. I'm happy to hear that and I know there are other people doing it too. You know and I I don't want to go back and, and, and I don't want to belittle the subject but other things get broken around here and we gladly replace them. Of course. Yes and again that wasn't I, a I, down comments. No 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 I know I know I know but I you know we you know yeah. I brought it up to him we just replaced a whole bunch of lockers because people put their football helmets in them. So things get broken around schools, and they probably are going to break this stuff. But you know what? We need to give them a chance to be to have the theater experience that I had at Southeast, and we did, and we had the right equipment. So just please, I don't. I'd rather you didn't shave that number. I'd rather you made it higher. Okay, I will. That's me. I'm only one. Well, me and uh, Mr. Stump will keep you guys in the loop on as we discuss this because I, again, I love the support and I would happy. happy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, the motion on the table right now is uh, to do those, all those upgrades uh, when, when the grants, with the grant funding, which is 140 some, 100, almost $146,000. So, the ECF grant coming into the district. Um, to offset cost there, leaving us at 25000 some. And for now, uh, we're talking about a cost of at or under 6000 in the theater. Any other discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 5 0. Thank you, Mr. Great. Thanks. You guys have a good night. Thank you. you. Too. Thank you. Too. Okay, item 4.2 curriculum. I'm going to save you. Seventy-eight dollars. I'll bring you a DVD player. You don't need to buy one. <laughs> I got tons. Of them. You got closets. Are you the one that updated the one? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone out there need Remind DVD me. players? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's actually a Sony. <laughs> Blu-ray. Okay, we have uh, 4.2 curriculum adoption for PLA. <laughs> We have a, a number of years ago now already we have to do a, a scheduled calendar across years of uh, reviewing and updating our curriculum to make sure that we are uniform and consistent across grade levels and across elementary to the secondary and communication across those those levels within certain subject matters are happening. So we did the math uh, last year. That's the second go around on the math that we've been through since we've started the schedule and now a day for the present time that schedule. That is correct. Um, it was a five year rotation. We added a sixth year when uh, COVID threw everything into chaos. Uh, and so we are back to math kicked us off for the second round. We're now in our second year, uh, which ELA is, is up. Um, Science next? Mm -hmm. Science is next year. Okay. So that they will get started at the end of this year uh, and start reviewing curriculum to, to do this process for next year. Uh, math and English are the two most expensive uh, on the rotation. Uh, ELA is listed here. <coughs> um, the K6 uh, group. Uh, reviewed several different programs and spent a good amount of time over the course of the last 10 months or so uh, reviewing, uh, visiting schools, uh, and uh, hearing from different prod prod products. Um, would you like to speak to what the K-6? Sure. Um, it's Witt and Wisdom. It's um, Great Minds Resource, and that's who does our math. So it's set up the same format, but they have modules. They're familiar with the top math. They're familiar with modules and how that works. Um, it is science of reading based, which is um, how you teach reading, science of reading, especially in the language comprehension area. Um, it pairs nicely with what we do with pathways to reading. So it's a complete transition from K2 pathways into Three, six, and this. It will be vertically aligned so that standards are being addressed this year. So, like the fourth grade teacher will be teaching the same 
just so you can make sure all the standards are being met. Um, it increases the vocabulary and content to use a wide range of topics. Um, there's a grammar piece tied to it, which was really neat, and the writing component. It is novel-based. It's not your old staple where stories are boring and people don't like them. So they'll actually be reading novels that are quite new. Um, with training, we have the launch, just like we did the staff. And then later, after they've used it, maybe in September or October, they would do another PD where you have used it a little bit. So then they would have questions that could get answered. They can um, outdo the PD. And they have coaching throughout the year that we can contact them and ask them questions. And they have really been great. Um, Kristen and I, and Tristan on our own, have sat down with them and we've had Zoom meetings and talked about it. It's a lot of good. It's on the right track. The places where um, they visited, they're seeing a lot of progress. Good luck. The text is interesting. Uh, 712 ELA is um, also adopting. I included a quick summary here from oh, loading, um, <coughs> Mr. Anderson and online counsel uh, who goes through the different uh, sections and see the case six was called wit and wisdom. And what was 712? Here's what goes with the literature. Okay. And then the inquire is the grammar. And so that's the 712 component. Uh, they are listed there for you. And I uh, kind of summarize what's going on there. Uh, K6 curriculum. Uh, at about 65,000, the K-6 uh, professional development uh, is 12,000. That's three different sessions plus ongoing support. And then you've got your uh, secondary there, which includes uh, mirrors and windows at 32,000 plus uh, your writing curriculum plus some novel work uh, for a total of $118,667 for the ELA curriculum. If you have any questions for the principals over the process or the curriculum that they are recommending? Why, why is there no professional development for seven to 12? That's Does a good they, question. Are they not needed or? Uh, they felt that the, the books that they chose were uh, similar enough to the books that they have and the curriculum that they have that there wasn't a needed designated uh, PD for that. Uh, there's going to be a, a little bit of an adjustment, of course, but uh, it wasn't something they felt like needed a, a dedicated day to, to go through and the, big changes. Yeah, the mirrors and windows is that exact what we have now, just the updated with some different short stories and those yeah. kind of things. So that one is really just an update to some okay. stories. So they didn't. And the inquire, which is all the grammar stuff, is ties very closely into the language skills that they've already done. So they didn't really feel like there was anything that was new, brand new, new and different, new. Okay. They were. That suits me. I mean, if, yeah. they, if they think they've got it covered, I assume we get some support, though, if there is a. Yeah, I would think so. And I know that the companies that they were working with have been great at communicating with them. And okay. the teachers did it themselves. Terry and Don did the majority. Um, Alicia did a lot. And after to look at the great minds that Figure 6 is getting, um, there wasn't any great guarantee that it was going to continue with 7 8. And the few districts who had done it 7 8 have all changed and not used 7 8. They do a K 6, but it's pulled back. Great minds for seven eight, so we didn't want to go to that. So Good what night. is seven doing? He outlines what English ten will do since they don't get books, but not what seven does since they don't get a book. We have a special 
Patrick? Yeah. Patrick explained that he is um, he is designing most of his stuff, uh, and he did already, and he's happy with what he's got. Um, it's changed a lot lately because it used to be that humanities where it was combined social studies and English, right. and when it pulled out, it was created. <coughs> he follows the standards, mm -hmm. and he can give a list of the standards, but he does cover which they meet together, and so what we know is it's vertically aligned. Mm -hmm. um, it just isn't a set curriculum that complies. Created it more himself. <coughs> Here. I currently use uh, Common Lit, which is a free online and paperless curriculum <coughs> that was given to me in a workshop from the KSDE ELA director. Common Lit uh, constantly adds new units, lessons, and theory, <coughs> keeps expression relevant. Uh, I haven't used we haven't used the same resources from Common Lit each year because I base it off of past student surveys. And what may be interesting to the current class that I have it allows some flexibility um, and then of course we have IXL uh, which is a program we adopted at Christmas time and it has uh, strong ELA remediation and study and skills along with it and he uses that to supplement common lit so he's asking for some novels to go along with his curriculum um, but he was happy with common lit as resources. And all the ELA use the IXL very well to supplement, and that's a great one for our remediation. It's a good program to take implement it. I'm interested in a note about starting to include some graphic novels. So I think my kids read those. They're those. Mm -hmm. They look like a cartoon thing in the newspaper. Is that yeah. am I right? Yeah, some of them. Yeah. And that plays into the catching their interest. If they're interested in it, they will read it, and it really does a nice job of blending the literature with art. And so those kids who are really into the artist part of it, uh, it feeds both sides. Mrs. Gorman, it's not necessarily part of the ELA, but it's probably related. You know, we worked on handwriting stuff a number of years ago. Is there any updates to that? Still, still consistent there. And no, no new resources. I don't remember if that was on the schedule somewhere. No new resources are needed there. Those are consumables, correct? Consumables, yeah. Which means we purchase those, they're basically workbooks, and we purchase those every year. It's not a curriculum adoption, it's just considered a regular yearly expense. <laughs> Any more questions for the ELA? Okay, the other one that's listed on here is a uh, $3,000 purchase. Uh, we are looking at adding a math course to our rotation. Um, this would be considered a math class above Algebra 1, uh, but not as challenging or not as, as high as, as even an Algebra 2 would be. Uh, we are uh, not finding much uh, benefit from our current pre-algebra uh, course, so we are looking to, instead of going lower, putting a class above and walking away from or backing away from the pre-algebra class, uh, starting the kids with algebra, but giving them uh, alternatives for getting their second and third math credit uh, that doesn't necessarily mean mm -hmm. college prep. Uh, it's, it's more hands-on type thing. We look through the um, Salina Tech, some of the programs with Salina Tech, they have to take technical math, which we do give them math credit for, but not every program has, with more that type of thing, with more 
it's about algebra it's showing that more application in the hands on. And so we feel like this will be um, more challenging for our <coughs> students, which is a good thing. So we'll push our students uh, to use the map, apply the map, uh, and uh, this is something that uh, Missy Bradley uh, did extensive research on, and she is choosing uh, this book, and we're going to make this adjustment to our math curriculum starting next year. If you include these purchases that are, are listed there, uh, if there are any other questions we can answer. I move we approve the curriculum update purchases for ELA, K through 12, and math. For a total of one hundred and twenty one thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars. Moved and second. Any other discussion? We have one more question. Um, this is right the practical English American lit and British literature. Is mm -hmm. those are those two new classes being offered this coming year or have been offered this year? No, it will be offered next year. And it's actually one of them will be offered at the time in junior just you know they'll do it together and then it'll rotate the next year it'll be the opposite one so they'll kind of be mixed okay interesting so that another thing is kind of for the kids going not wanting the comp not wanting the college credit english 12 was kind of stagnant and not really pushing them or doing anything that makes them apply information and so this is the ELA position. So will it be in place of English 12? Yes. Well it'll actually be in place of English some English 11 and English 12. So like kids will choose that as a route instead of college. <coughs> Four years. Any questions or discussion? All in favor of the motion on the table say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you to the ELA department and the principals for doing that review process and putting thoughtfulness into how we're approaching our curriculum. Four dot three facilities discussion. I wanted to circle back around to this. Um, had a meeting with. Um, staff had a meeting, a public meeting, um, had nine or ten attend the public meeting, uh, got five responses back from the survey, and those uh, responses are here from you, uh, for you. There's not a lot we can you know, bank on with only five responses, uh, but it was kind of a good first attempt. I do plan on having another public um, open to the public meeting. I haven't set, put it on the calendar yet, uh, but I feel like uh, it's good to get that feedback and it would be good to get a broader spectrum uh, for that feedback. I did include the uh, PowerPoint that I used during the meeting um, and I was not widely sharing the survey because I wanted people to have a chance to go through and ask questions and get the <coughs> specifics before asking their opinions on stuff. Um, so that's that's why I haven't necessarily publicized the survey in general uh, to all staff or to all patrons. Uh, I felt like I wanted to make sure that they heard the information first. Um, some things were interesting on the survey, but again, with such a low uh, result, uh, it's hard to really bank a lot on those. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the Field Hut House project got all nines and tens uh, and was one of the only, pretty much the only project that did uh, get that high of a score. Uh, the classroom addition project got a fairly high score, uh, eight through ten, uh, and you can kind of look down through some of those. 
uh, and see the feedback that we did get. Um, but again, I, I can't say that we can necessarily make decisions based on such a low sample. They were they were engaged. They were nice. So. Thank you, Dwight, for for coming to that meeting. Uh, yes, the the group was asked questions. We had good conversations, um, and and I thought that it went really well as far as the meeting goes. I just I wish there were 200 people there, but there weren't. Um, and you, you take what you can get as far as feedback. And I thought I got good conversations from those that were there and I much appreciate it. Um, I am again planning to do another one and, and see if we can't get some more people to show as well uh, and get <coughs> some feedback on that. Plus we have a district side council coming up and uh, I thought that would be a good chance to kind of uh, tap into that piece as well. You have some other documents that are provided for you here. Um, I'm trying to organize the fax room renovation and give you kind of an idea of where we're at. Uh, so the fax room renovation list uh, shows cabinets and countertops that approximately, um, well, counters and cabinet tops are gonna cost 61,000. That does not include removal of the current or installation of the new. That will be done. Uh, we will subcontract that uh, and get the, that taken care of. Uh, our intention here is to do removal ourselves, basically, and then contract for the installation. Uh, two new refrigerators for approximately $3,500. One new stove, approximately $800. Five new microwave vents. Uh, just under 2000 uh, There was some debate, and I want to get more feedback from uh, those who are using the machines on the uh, washer and dryer. Uh, I was talking with the, actually, the distributor for Steve Clean, uh, who was out of Wichita, when I mentioned that they were preferring top load, uh, you could hear a pin drop. The, he was just stunned that I would even mention it. Uh, thought it was a, a total mistake. He said, I'll sell them to you if you want them. But uh, front loads are uh, superior in every way, is what he told me. Uh, no, oh, every crap. way. <laughs> so. Every appliance place in Salinas is the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. And everybody's carrying front loaders with removable, top loaders with removable <laughs> agitators. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm right. getting rid of my front one, getting a top one. Roger, I have a top load speed clean, and that was because of the, all the problems with having to leave doors open, the smell down, mm -hmm. cutting clothes, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. from the seal. There's absolutely no way that no. you need to not talk to him again because I would not take a recommendation he for is, him. A, a, he is I don't care. Salesman. They they sell top load. I. Oh, well, we've struck a subject here. Oh. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't care about it, but I do. Well, so I've got front load and I love them. Oh, them. I oh hate you them. love them. Oh. There you go. You love them all you want, man. Front load won't get fertilizer. I get it. Nope. Yeah. Well, you know, you don't use no water. water. You know, you know, water. <laughs> Roger, what, uh, the, there's a washer and dryer in there right now. Where will those go? I'm not sure they're salvageable. Okay. I didn't know. I think the ones in the basement maybe are in even worse shape. I didn't know. Ones in the basement are commercial, massive commercial machines. I don't know what shape they're in. Um, the ones that are in the fax room are missing a few buttons here and there. Um, we will either surplus them or repurpose them. Uh, if they're better than the other ones, we, we could potentially do that. They're a whole lot smaller. You could almost fit the one in the fax room into the one in the basement. Some of those, some of those old big commercial ones, I don't have a comment on a lot of the front load, but they're a different beast. Yeah, they are. Might, uh, Might put that on but our list you know, of things to kind of check. They're probably the same ones that when I was manager of basketball. Yeah, like you have to rig it so that it's the dryer's place. I think some people maybe then don't use those and maybe come up and use the fax 
pushing to this is maybe why they're getting some more rare, possibly. So I don't know if we could just put that on our list to check into for next year on those in the basement. Maybe with that uh, technology, maybe. I, yeah, I would encourage you to talk to the appliance to center and ask for Kevin Craver because he fixes everybody's appliances around. I, I intended to uh, take this list into town. Um, a lot of these I researched on just sure. online from Lowe's on what models and what options. And uh, now that I've got them, and if with your uh, approval, I'm going to basically take this as a bid sheet and go around and, and hit the appliance stores, get their feedback and their bids for the vent hoods, the oven, the refrigerators, washer dryers, and, uh, and try to get a package discount. On and we're we're talking about 20 items uh, here, so we should be able to get a bulk discount, uh, whether it's from uh, Lowe's or it's from the appliance centers, whatever it is. Uh, they should be able to give us a discount for that. They're the only guys in town that actually repair stuff. The appliance center. That's the red one. And, and suburban. Do they do do service anymore? And they have both had ties to Southeast of graduating year. Yeah. So I, I will take this list and then uh, get bids. Uh, the next one on the list is sewing machines, uh, and that comes with a service agreement. Uh, and so I think we're in good shape there. Uh, we're yeah, <laughs> make sure it's not a five-year <laughs> only. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. kind of surprised you're getting into a service agreement. What did you no. talk about? Thank you for that. Sorry for derailing. <laughs> you have to admit that was funny. Three and four. And uh, Susan has looked at some commercial-style prep tables. Um, at a you know kitchen supply, but we have not gotten to the point of uh, identifying tables and chairs that, that we're going to go in there as well. And so that's just kind of a breakdown of uh, those things, uh, where we're at, and what we're looking at as far as expenses. Uh, the next one is basically what I would take for a bid list of, around. And then just a couple of days ago, uh, I received another uh, drawing from uh, our ar architect, which showed uh, some elevations for the first time uh, on the field house. So uh, if you have trouble visualizing what a floor plan turns into for a building, uh, he's got all sides of it there. Uh, to kind of give you an idea of what it would look like as a finished product. Was that that second one? Had I did I miss miss my gears? I hadn't seen that configuration. Maybe everybody did I mess up? Because I I just remember the first one when we had the meeting. I, you might just explain what you did different on the second one, unless everybody yeah, else. I haven't seen. So the one that is shown here was an alternative design. Um, and in this case, instead of breaking the west wall down to extend the bathroom, the bathrooms are extended in, and we build a concession stand on the west side. And mm -hmm. so the extra square footage is specifically concession stand, external square footage is specifically uh, concession stand. Now, one of the benefits of doing this is there isn't a second floor above that because we were struggling to figure out what we would even use for second floor space like that. It's it's not a conducive uh, storage area because you got to haul it upstairs and whatever it is, uh, and it's not climate controlled, so you're limited on what you can put up there, both on size and uh, product. So this is a second or an alternative uh, to the one that we shared last month. Uh, Last month, the one was kind of in a in a U shape because both the boys and girls restrooms are extended to the west, and this one you can see is more in a T shape. 
and that uh, building out, you have windows on the sides of the concession then? Windows are on the north and south side, uh, two on each. You'd end up with four lines. You'd be able to spread them out. That is awesome. And then yeah. for like a junior high, you can shut down one side and just serve out of the other. Or you could just do hamburgers and hot dogs out of one if you have the grills. Yeah, that is so cool. Uh, and this does have, this was another part of that consideration is this does have a door on the west side into the concession stands mm -hmm. for basically that hamburger hot dog. You know, you cook it outside on the grill, you can get in, you don't have to fight the crowd to get to the door. That's actually one of the reasons we looked at this. The other one was it leaves the external walls intact. The only, the only part of the external wall that is messed with is where the big overhead doors are, and that's, right. so that's happened so, on anyway. So the w windows are actually on the north and the, and the, north and north and the west. south. Not on the west. I'm not sure where that is. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I think those are the uh, refrigerator cap, uh, cap coolers for the, the pops and stuff like that. My uh, mistake. Would be on the west. I know. Part of the reason there, and one of his designs had a flower uh, pot and stuff along the west side, but um, <laughs> one of the yeah. issues with putting the windows on the west is as it slopes down, your building's going to appear to get taller. And so there's going to become a, a little bit of a discrepancy there. Uh, having the windows further up, closer to the building, will reduce the amount of drop you'll have. Same with the door that will be there. <coughs> and so then there's no second floor? No second floor above the concession. Okay, but above the other part still. Right. If okay. You look, uh, roll down. Well, the top okay, right that's what I was one, thinking I was seeing, but yeah. that, that possibly could drop some money off of it, couldn't it? Yes. So to, to offset some of the other costs. Um, oh. But again, part of that was the second floor being as large as it was in the other one. We weren't sure we were going to be able to <laughs> effectively <laughs> use that in case. So you've got. And you've got multiple elevations there. Uh, to show what it would look like from all four directions. Yeah, it looks good. The one concern that came back uh, came back to me after we held our meeting. You'll notice the five rooms that are along the uh, football field. Mm -hmm. uh, he's only got four chairs in the center uh, center spot. Uh, it is the width of that building uh, does not allow for a lot of frontage space there, a lot of front windows there. Uh, so it, we're going to fill that space very quickly. Uh, the, we always have at least one radio announcer. Uh, Sometimes we will have two. Uh, a lot of our visiting teams will bring one with them. And then you've got your home coach, your visitor coach, and only four chairs for your press box there. And we very often will have four or five or six people in that. You'll have a scorekeeper, a timekeeper, a uh, uh, announcer, announcer uh, somebody to you – know, we run those graphics on the scoreboard. Um, it, it can, it's not generous, let me put it that way. We, we will fill that space rather mm -hmm. quickly. Uh, I don't know what our options would be. Uh, talked about whether or not it could be extended with an overhang going either way. Uh, I'm sure that would probably add quite a bit to the expense to, yeah. to increase. But the most valuable square footage, of course, is along the the east side of that where it's facing the football. Mm -hmm. um, any questions over that? None of this is set in stone. These are all concepts at this point. Uh, we are going to have to start uh, drilling down into some of these concepts and, and allowing the architect to work uh, deeper into what can and can't be done and how things need to be organized. I've shot him a few different ideas. Uh, and he's shot some of them down and incorporated others. 
uh, into it. Okay, go through this again with me. On the top, the rooms that are two and two, we would have coaches in one, right? And then the other one you're saying, radio announcers? So then would it be the same for the other side? Okay, so you wouldn't put both radio announcers together because they'd be talking over each other. You put one on one side, one on the other side? It's labeled here, visitor, visitor, and Trojans, Trojans. Mm -hmm. And basically what you'd have is one room for media, one room for coaches, mm -hmm. visitors, uh, pets, and then one room for coaches, one room for media okay. at home. Uh, and nowadays, probably over half, if not three quarters of our away teams brought media with them. Uh, to broadcast back on their right. home station. Uh, and so those five rooms would be filled most home games. And depending upon the broadcast, sometimes it's student led and they do three or four students for everything. Sometimes it's just one or two people. Um, also, filming devices for football have changed. There's a lot more to it. Um, so they've got to have everything connected to the talk to the sideline, watch the film basically live. So there's lots of and that's changes. And coaches. Right, that's all coaches. Okay. Because um, <laughs> this design has the space on top, too. Yes, you can see it. Which would be, you know, the coaches are all for that. It's a great place to film from even higher. Okay. You know, the coaches like the higher angle. Does the coach actually do the filming, or do they have the kid do it? Uh, so, like with our football, uh, Mr. Jacobson is upstairs and he's filming from up above. Then we have kids who are on in the end zone on the end zone camera running that. So it kind of varies. Some schools have students who do the Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Oh, I think this looks good. Is that what we're waiting for? Am I okay? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't heard anything about the great fundraising that's going to be. Uh, that's a. Thank you for bringing that up, and that's a, a really good um, reminder there as well. Uh, mentioned to the different groups um, about fundraising uh, for these projects. Uh, specifically, the field house is the most. Uh, desirable to solicit funds for. Um, I know that there are uh, districts around that have done similar things uh, to different levels, and I believe I've shared uh, previously what the Avenue campaign was. Um, I would like to start in earnest uh, doing this, but we didn't answer the one question, which was, is naming rights uh, something that this board is will entertain for uh, for a major donation? And uh, is there criteria such as the one that was shared earlier that you want to uh, place on that? Uh, it, I need to know that as I draft and launch this uh, uh, this campaign. I can. Yeah, and we need to. Yeah, that kind of that kind of fell off my radar. I apologize to the board for that because I know that we set a deadline of June, right, Jill? Uh -huh. What we talked about. Yeah. Um, and if we don't have a final directive to you on what is available, it's going to be hard to <laughs> really hard to meet that deadline. So I can show you as an example. So we didn't pass any policy on that two was it two months ago we talked about this or three? No, uh, we talked about it extensively, and uh, it was kind of left 
as as undecided at that point. Some people were okay with it, some people weren't comfortable with it, and it, it wasn't eminent to be decided at that point. I remember we gave you the go at uh, yes to fundraising, yeah. but undecided on the, on the naming part. Okay. And we still talked about, I believe there in the motion, there's a cap of still around up six hundred some thousand dollars total, even with <laughs> fundraising. <laughs> So what you have up here is uh, an example of a campaign that was done, um, and you can see different uh, donation amount levels here, uh, ranging from $50 up to $25,000 on their poster, and a, a few of the incentives that they uh, listed there as well for that. Um, Things like a landy to the yard line. I'll have to get clarification on what some of these are. <laughs> Personalized bricks in the entryways. Um, they actually had personalized bricks in more than one place. So you've got bricks in the entryway. They had a ring of honor around the flagpole, which could be something that we would maybe put a plaque on the field house saying listing major donors, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, there are different incentives there, and I guess the question is, if you were to uh, go up from there to say the possibility of naming rights, which uh, again we're looking at with the cost of this project, looking at the guidelines that I borrowed from Kansas Wesleyan, two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, and a potential of say a hundred thousand dollars to name it for five years or. Or fifty thousand dollars to name it permanently, or something like that. Uh, you can see there was a name on the uh, on the concept that was there, uh, and on the slideshow I threw out a couple just silly samples there. Uh, the question is, is this board willing to entertain? I don't know that we'll get an offer for that. I mean, that's I, I mean, substantial. I, I really kind of like this kind of. Value because it allows you to recognize, but it doesn't have a Coca-Cola statement. And so I, I, I mean, I like kind of like the layout. I mean, I, how successful? I mean, how did this work for them? I mean, did they get several of the larger? A lot of it was paid for by one single massive donor, uh, one who plays in the NFL and has money. Uh, oh, gee, oh, let's, let's 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 think about this for a minute. Uh, and you know that's. That's such a, a, a nice addition, something that can do that. I don't know what they raised. So, so it was me. higher. It was higher than this. Then I assume. Uh, I don't know what dollar amount he contributed, but um, I I believe it was not on one of these charts. We're talking about right here. Yeah. A million. Oh well. Well, that's a nice round figure. Juice. What do you want here? So. Oh. How does Knopf Farm feel like? <laughs> <laughs> We've been worse every day. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> well, I mean, I, and I'm just at, I mean, you know, I, I think we have some potential. Probably with those numbers, I think you're going to. Maybe we have somebody that gets higher, I don't know, but I mean, I think that's a real good place to start. I, mean, I think, I, I, and I'm going to call and clarify on what some of these are, and then I can open it up as far as discussion on what other things might, you know, fit better on this or that. Um, I'm, I'm assuming the land deed is just a certificate that you hang on your wall um, at home, and <coughs> that, that's something that'd be easy enough to produce and, and distribute. Uh, we, the Booster Club, does, you know, put stuff in. Uh, programs and things like that, and we can certainly uh, look at different ways in which we can honor people who uh, contribute. Um, but you know, the underlying question there, and it's it is whether or not we want to try and do a stadium uh, name. This is Cowboy Stadium. This is their uh, their mascot. They did not put a name on it, to my knowledge. And there's two different things here. There's there's the there's the name of the stadium or the field. Steve Fritz Field. Correct. And then there's the name of the field house. 
I think can be separated. Oh no, I I think yeah I would, and I I mean if you I mean if if, if you had a platinum added onto that MVP had a platinum and you know and it was above X amount of dollars and you wanted to put up there you know congratulations to our platinum members and their name was on the side of the building that says that they donated oh I mean that would be preferable to me that you know like you know we recognize because there may be more than one I mean you know as far as yeah. a platinum member you know. Uh, because then, you know, it's very nice to recognize them, but then it doesn't become a personal or, or a more uh, selfish thing to me. So, or, I mean, Steve got his name on there because of what he did as an athlete and where he went as an Olympian, which is outstanding. Mm -hmm. the, the way that that was done. Yeah. So, uh, and so that's that's the question that needs decided so that I can. Uh, Actually launch this campaign and, and get this uh, get this ball rolling. Uh, that's the one piece that I'm not sure on. I've heard some for some again. We need to take a vote on that tonight. I I would appreciate yes uh, firm guidance on that. Um, you had a guideline as far as that guideline goes. Um, project of this size required 50 percent um, of the estimated total. Uh, there was other <clears throat> guidelines. Again, for example, if you wanted a smaller project, uh, <coughs> you'll have to decide whether or not you're comfortable doing that. I mean, if we put a uh, bathrooms concessions out at baseball, softball, and we put, and it's a hundred thousand dollar project, and we get a donor uh, at that level, it needs to be seventy-five percent. So. 75,000 and we covered the other 25 and we, we put your name on it, uh, memory of or whatever it is. And we go to Jerry Ivey all the time, play at Dean Evans half, you know, multiple times a year. And I don't know that anybody even gives us a second thought. And that's kind of what we're talking about here with this type of thing is it just becomes an identifier of that building. Except for the fact that those are memorials not named because of funding. Well, good question that Cody has to have his name put on the building. I don't know that he did. I bet he didn't. My opinion is I'm all fine with asking for donations. I'm fine with putting a plaque up there with everybody that donated. I, I have a little issue with naming something. Yeah, I, I, I just think you said based that. on funding. I, I think that's my did, opinion. I think you just said what I was thinking as far as that goes. I'm fine with the level too. Yeah, your name gets bigger, you get more money. I mean, exactly. But if different you're, level plaques. Yeah, if you do something, but everybody yeah, on yeah. it, whether you can. Afford yep. to contribute fifty dollars yep. or five thousand dollars. Yep, your contribution is valuable, and I think that's the right way to do it for a, for a school. Because I mean, it, and it ought to be, you know, Trojan facility. Uh, I, that's I'll quit. Everybody knows that. I think. No, I think that's. I think that's admirable. I I like you know. I like that we are searching out the financing of it because it. I think it's important to <clears throat> say, you know, not spend six hundred thousand of the taxpayer money to do this. And so I really appreciate that's a compromise for me. Yeah. You know, I think we'll get. I think we should get some money. I think we will. It might be a lot of little ones, but. Teresa, any comments? Bill, any thoughts or comments? I agree with Steve. Okay. Oh, don't agree. Um, <laughs> so I'll make a motion that we <coughs> continue to pursue fundraising campaigns with different recognitions at different levels um, to be Roger to determine. determined by the superintendent and updated to the school board. Uh, but naming rights to the entire facility is not available. 
I commented, I like kind of like the way that they had theirs laid out. That looks pretty reasonable. Yeah. The the second option, the the new one. Oh, you're talking the the banner. The yeah. ba the banner, and I, I think there needs to be one up above that. Okay. Platinum. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't buy my wheat field. <laughs> what wheat field? Yeah. I thought that was cover crop. One additional, <laughs> one additional uh, level up there. Um, are you comfortable? Does that motion give you direct? Well, we haven't yes. voted yet. Does that yes. motion give you direction that you need? Okay. I would also, just this, like uh, me as one board member speaking, if as you explore, I think that's a directive for you. Hopefully, that gives you direct if this passes the direction you need. But if there's, as you start to explore these things, if there's an idea that the board needs to consider, then if someone approaches you with an idea, what you're thinking? It's yeah. something outside of naming the, the field house, right? Uh, full thing up here, entity or entity. Okay, any other discussion on the motion? Anybody, everyone clear on the motion on the table? So, on the, um, in their fundraising, they did signage on their field. And we might, that's something that Beecher Club does for their fundraising. So, conflict. I don't know that they did, did they say signage on the field? Uh, they did bricks almost. The almost lower, almost. the lower two or three levels was just signage. I just would want to take people that are advertising and getting money to Beecher Club for that advertising if they're like, oh, I yeah. would really like to support the field house, so I'm going to, for this year, do my signage for that purpose. And, um, yeah, that's a good point. The, I'm not sure what the signage there okay, is. So it was the only the A Club and the varsity that looked like. Yeah. But it, with the, that would... Uh, so what you're afraid of is that that would negatively affect the booster club. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to compete with them. Oh, I see. I'm just trying to make sure everybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're probably gonna probably gonna be a little tough to get that out for that for that year. It's probably gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. How, how much how going. much money is the booster club? We'll talk about. It. Okay. It's okay. A, it's most of our fundraising has been for them. Good point, Trees. Any other discussion? Questions? All in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye vote. <laughs> See, they, I read that deal. They don't give you a choice on the next one. Do you? No. No, and my apologies. I, I honestly think we're going to end up having to have a, a special board meeting at the end of the month to approve. Uh, the new district. Uh, I I was I was well aware that it was coming, um, but uh, I was not necessarily aware of how quickly it would get here. Uh, and so, what you see here is a couple of different maps, and uh, these are provided for you. And so, this is the existing map. And the way it is existing, and I'm just going to use the, the towns to identify the three different zones that we have. Uh, the KIPP zone is population current as of the 2020 census is 884, the gypsum at 876, and the Assyria at 1211. Oh. And so you've got a pretty large That's discrepancy of about 40% higher population in the area and that means that the square miles in the area zone needs to shrink. We need to move some of those people out of the area zone into the Kip and Gypsum areas to balance the three so that there one board member is representing approximately the same number of patrons in each of the three different areas. But this area doesn't have those two brown ones at Holmes Road. That's KIPP. This Is section that, right here. KIPP gets all their people in. Um, yeah. Right. On, um, on Holmes Road, uh, you've got a, a pretty large group uh, right. off of uh, 
off of Magnolia on Holmes, uh, where the pavement is, you've got quite a few houses mm -hmm. along here. Um, and that's a pretty high density area. You've got a fairly high density area by Country Club. Uh, you've got a high density area here, that sunny slope. Oh. And then you've got uh, the towns of Mentor, Assyria, and Gypsum. Um, this, uh, so you've got several different areas that have uh, that have populations, and you have some areas that are pretty well scattered. Uh, this map does not show the uh, Dickinson County population. This section right here has zero residents, so it adds nothing to the total. These sections down here have a grand total of 25 residents, and so that would add to this total, so you're really looking at 900 for the gypsum represents. So, that's my way map. Um, lives up there. Um, there is also a little section right here in McPherson. I did not ask for its population. There's one house. There's also a little section in McPherson County right here. There is not a structure in that. So there is zero population. So that does not need to be added. I don't know how many people live in that one house, but I'm going to guess five or less. So that would be added to the Assyria one here. This is existing. So, since everybody in the district votes on us, the only effect it has is on who can run in a particular district. It really doesn't have any effect on the right. outcome. Because Correct. They, right. right. Okay. Um, with the exception of a primary, uh, if you have more than two, res two uh, people running, uh, it forces a primary. And if it forces a primary, then only the members in that zone get to vote uh, to narrow the Good catch. Um, some districts have seven at-large positions. Mm -hmm. We do not. We have three zones, two uh, board members in each zone and one at-large. Uh, the state allows us three different configurations of how we do that. This is what was chosen. And then it becomes our obligation to balance these three zones in some sort of fashion to make sure that um, it's evenly represented. So I'm actually going to start with option two here. Now, were you given these two options then? Or is this just hypothetical? These are hypothetical options. This is these are options I came up with. Okay. Um so right now. The boundary is on Farley Road, mm -hmm. which is right here. And so the other boundary is on Simpson, which is right here. Mm -hmm. And so if we take, that's not the one I want. So I took it from Farley down to Mentor, this line across here, and then this is Ohio, this line right here, and now we've got 957, 992, and 1022, we're within 50 in each of those. And then you add the 25 Dickinson County in here, and we're basically at 1020, 1020, and 960. Uh, this is the most balanced. The problem here is one board member lives right here and another board member lives right here. And this actually jumps two. It moves you onto the line. You're across the street, so you're still in the same. So, uh, so she could still. Well, that's how it is now, isn't it? Yeah, you're on the snow. That's how you are now. I mean, Kip, and she's in gypsum, yeah. but because the line is far. Yeah. But that moves the line. Moves the line to Mentor, but you live on the south side of Mentor, so you stay in the gypsum area. Uh, moving it to Ohio, you end up in the gypsum area. Stephanie ends up in the Kip area. And the reason this happens, again, is because the Assyria Mentor Bridgeport is the largest population. I have to shrink that zone. So 
This is an option, it doesn't have to be the option, um, although this meets all the criteria. We get to make the choice? Yes. Oh, wow. I thought the state would so two options. It moves Sharice and, and <laughs> Stephanie. Oh. Right. So weird. it is weird. Uh, it Welcome is weird because <laughs> the line is so close <laughs> to this area. Yeah. the implications of something like this is. So um, Teresa's position is expires at this term. Um, if she were to register again, her choice would be to register in gypsum or register at large. Both of those uh, are open this election. You would not be able to register in this area which for your current position. Stephanie is not up for election this cycle. She would be allowed to represent the Assyria Mentor area for the remaining two years. And then two years from now, she would have to, uh, the only open position in her residence would be seat position when it comes to two years from now. She would still be allowed to continue her full four years. Now, if she wanted to, she could register for the hip election that's coming open and cutters in half, but then we have to backfill her position if she got the new one, and that would be complicated. But we don't cut anybody's position short. But again, yeah, when we do a flip the line at Ohio, I'm not sure that's necessarily the best way to do that. No, 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 but she would be running against you. Um, yes, right. Where does that put so she has Mentor is right here. What it does is it splits the town of Mentor from oh. that little development on the east side of Ohio Road, which isn't really Mentor, but I mean, if you ask one of those people where they live, yeah. they'll say Mentor. Mm -hmm. Kitty, south of, south of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kenny, yeah. Kenny's in the town, so he'd be to the west of that line. But this little spot here that's a little bit darker, uh, Mr. Kassman lives down that road. Uh, there's there's a dozen houses or so down this road. Mm -hmm. uh, they would now be part of the KIP area. Okay, so this is one. Now, if you look at the numbers, this is optimal. But if you look at where the line is, right there next to, I mean, just right on the uh, Assyria well, line. Well, even back short goes the gypsum. Yeah. Because he's on that he's side of Ohio. The east side. Um, so there are some concerns with that model. And again, these are potentials. Right. These are things that I drew. Here's and the fourth, second one. They don't have to be straight lines. No. Um, yeah, but they need them. This one is a little bit different. Um, she didn't do it the way I asked her to do it at the county. I wanted it still on mentor. Uh, but this one goes with... Um, was that Hodgkins, Hopkins, um, Hopkins Road, and I wouldn't do Farley, I would do Mentor. Um, How many people does that take out of the gypsum then? Uh, to, to drop it that far, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, that you'd be looking at this one, this one, and, and a couple here, you're looking at um, 150. So you take out of this, You'd add in the 25 that are over here. So that's minus 125. Uh, so you'd still be looking at over 900. Uh, this number is too low. That's why I'd have to move this down to mentor. I still don't think, because I did the math, I need to get 40 people out of here to be within the plus or minus 5%. Um, so moving this line doesn't help me. This is still too big a number. So the question is, where do I get 40 people out of this to go over here? And my real only answer is still going to be right here, and that's where Stephanie is. Mm -hmm. I oh, don't. That line. I'm not really sure how else to do it. Um, moving one more this way would take it to McReynolds. 
but that takes it out of the gypsum zone and that's not the zone I need to take it out of. I need to take it out of this. I got to figure out where 40 people are over here that can go that way. Can you, I well, think. like you said, it's still where Stephanie is, but to move the green light, just the, just that area, move the green light over, make it a L. I can do it right here. I, I'd run the whole thing on mentor this mm -hmm. way and then run it to here. Right. It would move Stephanie, but she wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything for two years. Yeah. She I would guess. still. I guess I want to see the county's actual numbers before I agree to anything. I'm not asking you to vote right now. That's why I'm saying I think we're probably going to have to have a special meeting. You're saying April. you'll take this green line and go here. Yes. But I'll take that line all the way on Mentor all the way to. Right. Move the yellow, but the green just two blocks of it. Yeah. From here, instead of going straight north, go across to Ohio and up on Ohio. And that, that way you may don't be cut enough. all the Ohio people because that is a lot for a ferry. I mean, that is a ferry. I mean, you know, if you ask Jody Short where she lives, she says right by Etheria or in Etheria, you know, right, right. at Etheria. Well, I don't know if I like this idea or hate this idea, but the other option is we don't have to call them Etheria, Gypsum, Gip, districts. We can call them District one, Southwest, two, Southeast, and North, or whatever, District 1, 2, and 3. And they are numbered, not named, but... Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, we all, I mean... When they when they built this place, so they did it so that they could try to get this thing put together because it was awful. Yeah. Uh, I could easily see in the future this going straight across, uh, straight across here, and that mentor and Kip will eventually get paired up right. um, to make sure that there is uh, a balance. There is the big issue no. here is. Hmm? Well, I was trying to put a baby to sleep last week. And so I drove south of the school, and how many houses are built or being built close to you is crazy. So, but that's going to add to gypsum, not to this area. In this area down here? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, like I even know people that say, oh, we're building seven miles south of the school, and I'm like, who wants to live seven miles south of the school? But they do, so that's a long way. <laughs> <laughs> What's what we want people to do? But yeah, so and there's a lot of newer houses out there. Yeah, yeah, long back. Yeah, there's a lot of long back. And the other thing we have to remember doing this is the area is a place that has the potential to keep growing its town, not gypsum. Gypsum is secluded with walls of a dike. They have so, places to do it, but it's probably not going to happen. Right, where Etheria has all kinds of area they could do it if they wanted so, to. So we redistrict in. Right, yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying more. is. At this point, we need to solve this, this issue. Um, and right. that's going to be. Well, it's going to change here after. That's going to be one of the things that we need to look at. I can draw this line here. Again, that moves a few from uh, this number, uh, from the gypsum number up to uh, the KIP mm -hmm. area which is what I had in the other one, uh, putting this on Mentor Road. But it really, I, I think this is going to have to be the area uh, that that we move um, over to Ohio and, and capture some of that population. That's really what I need to do. Is I need to transfer some yeah. people out of that zone up to the KIPP zone for now to balance until we get the 2030 census, and then we... Then we look at it again. So this is a yeah. once in ten year. Once in ten years thing. Yes. Um, All right, Jeff. Yeah. So I am going to ask the county to section this off and give me the numbers and see if if we are balanced at that point. Um, I I will ask the question of you at this point. This option here that I showed you, which goes down Ohio. It is balanced. You could approve this tonight. It is meets all the criteria, but you have to be comfortable with that. Um, when I don't know that I am. It's not mind? my call. It's yours. Is this yours? I would rather get the numbers from the third option and just yeah, and then see. And if we need to do this.
I try to keep all existing board members within their current zones, but three of you live within a mile of a boundary. Um, and and it, I've got to move it someplace. Just the wrong <laughs> other farm boundary. <laughs> the big boundary. The big boundary. Oh, I have to get that. Are you offering out an early retirement incentive? <laughs> That's a great question, Steve. Well, you don't have to put up with that. We might move some other boundaries. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So I will bring back that one adjustment if that one adjustment makes it. Um, we do have one board member it will impact, but I don't know how else to get 40 people out of. Well, There's no way you're going to so miss all of us with. Right. Yeah. I mean, Half of us living within a mile. That's right. Yeah, four of us. They don't necessarily want to do what the state house did. <laughs> you don't want to gerrymander? I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get totally confusing with every section being <laughs> zigzag around the other section necessarily. Um, I did look at voting precincts. The voting precincts are straight. Uh, townships and I, there aren't I, I can't go by township line um, again the township goes to Ohio so that that does that does exactly the same thing as it moves the boundary all the way to Ohio if I try to do that uh, by township and one of the township lines runs down Main Street Kip so you're splitting Kip in half if you go by townships Holy uh, that way as well uh, I may be able to balance it but I'm trying to keep population centers uh, as much together as I can when I do this. Uh, questions or concerns about that? If I were to set a special meeting at the end of the month, is that something that we would be able to do? Um, I'm guessing it would be a very, very short meeting, uh, and we might even be able to do it uh, virtually, but uh, I'd want to publish, and we have to put this in the paper and make sure everybody knows their new areas and uh, all of that. Probably on every meeting. Uh, the county wants me to have this done by May 1st. I'm not sure why when you have to register by June 1st. They're not giving it June 1st with everybody else, but they want to know by then. I, I will ask if that's a firm deadline. Uh, we have the last week of April. Uh, I can do Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. Friday's the only day I'm not available. So you're not, or you are. I'm not available, right? Okay. And we could potentially do it on uh, on the 24th. We could do it a little bit later for those of you who need to be in the field and stuff. We could do it at eight o'clock or seven o'clock. I mean, it's it's fine. Monday will be better for me, Roger, because usually we don't leave the country on a Monday, but. Can we go out Can we put shoot? this on for the 24th? You want to say 7 o'clock? You want to say 6.30 is what we've been doing. You want a little bit extra sunlight? You want to say 7 or? I like, well, I'll go as late as you want. Yeah, because it won't be a long meeting. Okay. Are anybody going to have to stay here that whole day? Well, I can go home and come back, and we can nominate somebody to oh, yeah. be clerk so you can go home. Yeah, let's so do I, that. If we can do that, then I'd be 7.30 or 8. So 7.30 is attractive. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
Steve takes start taking his nap at eight thirty. Seven thirty. Eight thirty. Steve gets ugly after eight. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. I think there's some burning. It smells like it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stump, for your information on that and report and all the um, dynamics, population dynamics you're learning about your district. All right, we're ready for 5.1, Board of Education Communications. We have um, Therese uh, is on note. I feel like it's supposed to be more, much more of the legwork for this than I have. Therese and Jill, uh, duo, Wednesday, April 26th. Um, I'll get with you if we can get a number and so that I know. April, Jill. And then, after we know a number, I might put in a request to have tables and numbers. Yeah, before we can have the cast field. Okay, yeah, he's using the night before. Because last year, um, yeah, we were fishing. We were calling stuff and we were setting tables and chairs up. So that could be done tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I think the night before. Yeah. And that might have been the case last year. So I know spring was busy. Yeah, just the baseball in Minneapolis. Like, well, there's probably something else that I don't know how many. What time does it start? 11.30. And Jill found their speaker for us, Courtney. Thank you, Jill. She's still light full. Yeah. She is. She is. So I think that's it. Good to go. Any other calls on the time that would like to? April 26th at 11.30 in the theater. Okay. Now, have we always called it leadership luncheon or top 10% mm -hmm. luncheon? Top 10% luncheon. Let's mm -hmm. no, no. so just make sure we're consistent. <coughs> on my, no, it's on our agenda. Oh. I don't okay. remember. Okay. Where. I call it top 10%. Yeah, I, the calendar I, says I, 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 they need to be ready. I like that. Okay. That's more. That's more indicative of what they've accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. Lazy green, but okay. They got that down. Thank you, Jill and Therese. Um, <clears throat> other board communications. Um, we're doing the just the uh, summer youth program enrollment on the 26th but in the evening from 5:30 to 7 at the Methodist Church. So if you guys have any students or families that want to participate as either a student or a volunteer, volunteers are high school kids and above, and students are current first graders to current fifth graders for just them. And Liz Winship and Cindy Fritz are our teachers this year. And Liz is going to sit, hand out a flyer with kids that we haven't seen in the past from just them um, this week, just so their parents are aware too. So if you think of someone, get with her. I think that's it. About that. Okay, um, our last special meeting, we went through Board of Education goals. We didn't put anything on the agenda this month on that. Um, I want to make sure that we need to we need to finish that up. So Roger and I will work on when appropriate <coughs> tight month, whenever those are. <laughs> I don't really want to tag it onto a special meeting and go 
April probably, but. No, and I'm not sure there's a rush. Uh, we, we had some good conversations about it at the special meeting at the end of the month, last month, which is only about two weeks ago, uh, but we had uh, good conversation. And then uh, I think we can, I think we can finalize something in May. I don't, I believe this is our first board meeting since the state tournament. Um, I just want to publicly say how thrilled I was to for our students, um, our administrators, our staff, our fans to bring home that sportsmanship award. Um, thank you all. I know there's a lot of effort put on that. Thank you to our students and their leadership. The um, only boys team. We were. They got it. Oh. There were what four girls teams, I think, yeah. as well. It's not limited to just one team uh, per year. They they have a rubric. They rank the, the teams on the rubric, and they have a cut score. And so it is potential that multiple teams can be awarded that uh, in a year. And the girls had multiple win it. Uh, the boys only had one. That was all. Well, I'm really proud of everyone yeah. who participated and, and worked hard and uh, took it upon themselves to lead and bring that home. We were, uh, this board is talking about culture and and that could it on duty. fit in more um, with our goals and, and what we're wanting to see in this district. So thank you all for participating in that. And certainly also congratulations to our boys basketball program and team for their excellent efforts and excellent season. A good showing in the state tournament. Yeah. Second. Okay. Same to the wrestling program too. I don't think we've had a board meeting since that. I can't remember. But they had a, you know, from a program that was really struggling for a while, um, to have that type of state contenders and good success at the state tournament was really encouraging. Numbers. We're certainly help, and it's it's really encouraging two out of the three state qualifiers were freshmen. So, um, you know, we're bringing back uh, good talent, good experience, and uh, good numbers. Uh, so we've got a good place to build from. And they're both very good baseball players, also. Lots of areas. Any other board communications? Oh yeah, the girls program will probably be building even more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Principal's report, or sorry, Roger, superintendent's report. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm consistent on which one goes first. Start okay. Or not. Um, just as a heads up, please put May 14th on your calendar uh, so that graduation is, uh, is front and center for that day. Uh, we will be asking who. Uh, will be sitting on the floor uh, just so that we can plan. It is not a requirement. Uh, we just need to know who is and who isn't. Uh, sometimes we have board members decide to sit up in the stands, uh, especially if they have family, and sometimes uh, they're unable to attend. So that we just need to be able to account for that. And if uh, you know now, that would probably be a good time to find out by the next board meeting. I'm planning on being there as long as I will. Hey, I'll be there. I'll be there. Hey, you sure you're going? <laughs> I'm going to have a party. <laughs> you got to do. Are you sure? I'm going to Yeah. Dwight? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I've never chanted anything, and since it's probably my last time, I think I want to do something. Okay. And Justin? Or what? I think I'll likely be there. And then um, eighth grade promotion is the Wednesday the 17th. I'll be there. I think about it on me. I'll just send an email, but and it's at seven. It's a, I think I'm gonna be at a kindergarten graduation with my son. So in an eighth grade on the on the 14th. Yeah. Yeah. What's the eight time for the eighth grade? Seventeenth at seven p.m. Okay. Yeah, 
I just marked it for all day, so I better change that. <laughs> yeah, it's not all day. <laughs> what did you say is kindergarten that same night? No, I, I have a great nephew in Oklahoma. Oh, down there. Oh, yeah. Okay, excuse me. I wrote an email. When is our kindergarten one, Kathy? Sorry, we had a hijacked your superintendent's report. We, we, That's why you tell our principal to go we, first. Well, we, 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 actually have, we actually have brought it forward so that we're in the principal. The, the uh, uh, by, no, he does that. By 16 to 6 is kindergarten. 8th uh, grade is 17th at 7. Be followed by the dance. Oh. And then graduation is in the afternoon at 15th. And regional baseball is in Burlington. Yeah, that day? No, but it's in Burlington. Uh, our next and board meeting is the 8th, that is, um, you know, the Monday prior to the Sunday graduation. So uh, we will ask again just to confirm uh, on those different activities. And that will give you a chance to verify uh, who wants to do what. And we will ask those questions as far as uh, who wants to hand out and how we want to divide that out. Um, uh, Steve, we'll make sure you have that honor. And uh, we'll have a graduation practice with, uh, with the prior to uh, the Friday for the graduation. Uh, second thing on my list, uh, it seems like elections are a long way off, and it all depends on whether or not we have a primary. Um, but the registration is June 1st, and that's less than two months away. So um, for anybody in here, who is uh, considering running for re-election or anybody out there who would like to throw their hat in the ring, uh, no, there is a deadline, and it is June 1st uh, at, noon. at noon, and there is a $25 filing, $20. $20 filing fee. And uh, just so that everybody knows uh, that that is coming up. Again, I don't know why the boundaries is May 1st when June 1st for not naming yourself, but whatever. District site council is this next week. Um, and every year we do need to recruit uh, patrons for the site council. So again, um, we have board representation on elementary and secondary site councils, um, which are automatically part of the district site council. But we are always looking for new membership. And if anybody out there would like to get involved uh, with the district, that is a, a nice little step into it uh, to be involved with the site council. That's all I had on there outside of reports I've been uh, doing intermittently. And if you have any questions for me before we go on. I was curious. I saw the new bus sitting on our campus. Looks good. Um, for all the buses that we had had on order now, was that the last one yes. to be delivered? So all ordered buses are now on campus. And, uh, and running. So, yeah. Um, what was wrong with the one that broke down that was brand new? It would, uh, there was essentially a manufacturer's defect in the design. There was a plug that Bluebird added to the um,
actually everybody's doing math this week. And eighth grade ELA is your last eighth grade. Um, in Hanson scholarship winners, we had three in Matthew Redden, Madison Garrison, and Akari Morgan. Um, FCCLA, the state convention is later this year than typical because they don't actually have that until April 16th to the 18th. I was looking at my board report from last year and we already knew who was going to nationals, so they, they moved their state convention back, so we don't know that yet. Um, but FCLA took um, seven students to the state convention, and four of those qualified for national. Oh, wow. Awesome. So um, in their second year, so that was really good. Um, yeah, Lane Fritz got second in his, his business plan. Isabel Christensen was fourth in computer application. Asher Slank was first in his database design and application. And Madison Robb was second in intro to parliamentary. So nice. we have those that are qualified to go to nationals for the FCLA. So Lane's doing FCLA and FSA. Yeah. Lane is so Lane. Well, and Asher's FCCLA That's and FCLA. Yeah. And so they have the yes, yeah. they're, they're very, yeah, very busy. Mm -hmm. so, but um, lots of things coming up. And
couple of weeks, yeah. and we are always looking for volunteers to help us pull that off to take them on. And we have been absolutely impressive with the number of people and the amount of effort that we put into that event. Always get comments on that. It is, it is something that we are known for. So, uh, the, I know the teachers are actively engaging with volunteers and placing them in, play, um, in the spots to uh, get it pulled off. What time does the charge meet actually start on Friday? Full quarter. For field events? No field events. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions for the principals? <laughs> Thank you all for your reports. Thank you, Mrs. Franklin, for your report as well. Uh, Mr. Stone, I, Dwight mentioned the, the legislative you the issue. You continue to send out updates to us. Thank you for those. It's um, frustrating and mm, well, I have a lot of words, I guess. Interesting to watch how Topeka has been navigating <laughs> educational issues this session. Um, the Two two questions I had I didn't know the answer to on this uh, new enrollment or new attendance thing with the lottery. If a family has a student uh, in our district uh, and they have a sibling that's not enrolled in school yet, do they bypass the lottery or do they go through the lottery? So they get priority. And has there been, are you aware of a fix that's been made to faculty member students it has bypassing been, the lottery? It has been added to a bill. I don't okay. believe the bill has been passed. Um, and again, they, they take the things that we asked for and they uh, attach it to things that are terrible for us so that if we want the good, we have to take the bad with it. It's, it's just a ploy that... Uh, we asked very emphatically for that exception for uh, school personnel, and that's right now it has not been formally passed. It was part of one of the things that actually went down, uh, and then they ran out of time and adjourned without resolving <coughs> after the uh, outbreak for schools. Roger, would it be illegal for us to make that policy for? ourselves or I know at one time we talked about some policy we could make surrounding our enrollment but until that's passed we couldn't do that no I mean that would be in violation of the statute the way it is written um, for us to put any criteria including something as simple as prioritizing employee children uh, it, it seems like a rather easy ask but again they they use that as a bargaining chip so uh, when when they know it's something we want, we want to make sure that they get something out of it. Pass it. So at this point, it's it's in limbo. Uh, and the clock is out uh, because if they don't pass it in this session, uh, we won't start first year of implementation with something because yeah, we could. Uh, we have to set our numbers in January, but that would be for our summer enrollment following. And they will have another session January, February, March of next year before we actually, because we won't uh, accept people until June. So they could potentially not address it now and still fix it before it actually happens. We would have already set our limits but we will not have taken any applications or approved any applications by the time the next session rolls around. So I guess it's not a precedent situation. I mean, it sure bears concern because like you shared the other day, if you had a student that was suspended all last year, technically off suspension, you can't ask if they were suspended. Now if they're on suspension, you can ask that or Kicked out, you, you name it. You can't ask. Okay. Um, my only other note for principal, I really like this kindergarten screening or signing mm -hmm. um, thing. That was cool. 
know that that was pretty neat for those youngsters doing that. Nice way to celebrate their interest in our district and school. All right, I think we're done with everything except for executive session. Um, we'll take a uh, 10 minutes or five, seven, eight, 10 minute break and reconvene at uh, 8.55. Do we need anybody? I'm going to think we need. Mr. No. Draw the first, draw, uh, oh. <laughs> first time. <laughs> And to make up for all those meetings, you said it falls in. I like that small girl. I'm really glad that Roger or Duncan mentioned something about the sports and schoolers. I really like to write a story about that in the spotlight. How do we want to go about getting that information? I think in email today. Yeah. Yeah, we can be quick. Nice to hear. It'd be nice to hear from the kids sure, and say why is corporateships important to them. That'd be cool. Get yeah. a few quotes from students. We can do that. Yeah. I'd really like to better understand this rubric. I don't know if we don't at least talk about what the different categories are. No spitting, no fighting, no, no yelling. Or all the so I would really appreciate that.
do personnel first. Um, we need 20 minutes, 15. Okay. I'll make a motion. We enter into executive session uh, for the purpose of assessing performance issues of non elected personnel uh, with Mr. Stump, Mr. Miniman, and board return uh, at 9 10. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 5 0.
Okay, we're in open session. Find again. No. Yeah, for you close back. We have another personnel issue. If you'd like to send it back in. I move we uh, go the board go into executive session for the purpose of discussing performance issues of non elected personnel. Mr. Stump, Mr. Miniman, and the board return to open meeting at nine five. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried. I'll vote for Roy. Aye. aye.
Okay, we are in open session. Oh, I want to go back in. Five more minutes. The executive session for personnel. Second. With Mr. Miniman. Yeah, he might as well. He's, he's been here. He wants to stay. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay.
are now in open session. Okay. So, um, there is there is one more potential front, um, topic on there. If if you would like to go in, it doesn't need to be discussed. I listed one more. Um, it's pretty well been resolved, but if you'd like an update, I can. I like. I move we go into executive session for the purpose of discussing performance issues and non elected personnel on the board. We turn to open meeting at 9.40 with, uh, with Mr. Stump. No, let's let Mr. Adam go. All in favor, aye. 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 aye, opposed, aye. Thank you, Mr. Adam. Yes, thank you.
and ready for negotiation. Okay, item 6.3, over 20 minutes here. Move the board go in executive session for the purpose of discussing and identifying possible negotiation topics for 22-3 professional employees contract. Allowable exception, will we go in for 20 minutes? Actually 20. 10 o'clock. Just 10 o'clock. 18 minutes. With the up. superintendent. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.
now an open session. Okay, I don't see any other executive sessions, so we're down to 7.1. Do we need to need a motion? Yeah, yeah, we've got some motions for. Okay, I move we approve the hiring of Heather Lewis as tax teacher and FCCLA sponsor for the 23 and 24 year. Okay, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, no. I move we approve the hiring of Eileen Nicholson as a paraprofessional. All in favor, aye. Aye. I vote. I move we accept the resignation of Kelsey Strauss, effective at the end of the school year. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, I vote. I move. I move we. I move to hire Ashley Long as the high school cheer sponsor, Josh Nelson as the high school scholars bowl, and Dylan. Fidel as junior high assistant football coach. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 I, I took Steve's lead from there early in the meeting, man. He was, he was shoving him through. Whip one out. Right, get him out. I move we adjourn this meeting at 10.02. Second. All right. Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you.